Well, hello everyone. My name is Cliff Payne. I'm a jazz vocalist and I want to welcome you all, whether it be morning, afternoon, or evening, welcome to Alternative Venues for Jazz. And I first want to start off by thanking Gail Boyd, Gail Boyd Management, for giving me this opportunity to talk to you about my life and career in music and there are a variety of different uh, ways I guess to start this. I guess I'll just uh, start by saying I've been singing all my life. I come from a family of singers, musicians, and preachers. I'm originally from Harlem. I was born in Harlem and uh, I just celebrated uh, a birthday. Uh, should I tell you how old I am? Yeah, I'll tell you. I'm 68 and uh, June 8th was my birthday and um, as with all birthdays, uh, especially as you get older, as one gets older, you think about, oh, where you've been, where you are, where you'd like to go. And I certainly thought about that. So uh, the fact that I get a chance to uh, talk to you about the things going on in my mind musically, uh, that this is uh, excellent, uh, excellent timing. Um, let's start off with one question. Um, how did I get into jazz? How did I uh, start singing jazz? What was my, uh, what was the, uh, uh, the, the thing that really got me into jazz? Uh, I have to go back to talking about my, uh, my, uh, um, my, my family. You know, as I said, I was born in, in Harlem and my mom was a singer. Um, she uh, attended uh, college down in Tuskegee, but it was Tuskegee Institute, now it's the University of of Tuskegee. At one time, she backed Nat King Cole, one of her favorite singers, and mine also, uh, singing. She was singing in a choir. And she met my dad, her future husband, while doing the uh, that Nat King Cole gig. My dad was James Payne. They used to call him Buddy. Some called him Eyes, E-Y-E-S, Payne. And my mom and dad met uh, as uh, as I said on the uh, uh, that great gig with Nat King Cole, uh, and they went back to uh, uh, went to Harlem and and, uh, and, and married. My dad um, worked with Lionel Hampton, Lucky Millinder, uh, Fletcher Henderson, and Cozy Cole. And um, it's interesting because uh, how I got into jazz, born into it because. Back in the late 1950s, we lived in the same apartment building as Duke Ellington did. We were on the third floor, and Duke was on the fourth floor. Cozy Cole, the great drummer, great jazz drummer, was next door to us. So my mom, uh, my mom passed away years ago, uh, but she would always, from time to time, talk about what it was like living in an apartment with all these jazz jazz greats and Duke Ellington. She used to tell me about how she used to just happen to be in the lobby <coughs> when Duke Ellington uh, uh, went by. Uh, several years ago, about three years ago, I went back, three years ago, I went back to uh, Harlem to that apartment um, where we lived. And of course, the unfortunate thing about uh, living there was that uh, uh, my, my dad was, was murdered there in a crime that wasn't solved Oh, until years later, and that was the impetus for um, uh, my mom moving us out of Harlem into uh, to her hometown, which was in Evansville, Indiana, where I grew up. And I'm now speaking to you from the San Francisco Bay Area. So go from Harlem to Indiana to uh, California uh, Bay Area. How I got into jazz, I've, I think the very first jazz person that I heard or was familiar with was Duke Ellington. Um, I, I, I can remember as a child, my mom uh, in, in Indiana uh, getting babysitters uh, so that she could go see jazz concerts on the times when the shows were coming to town. And one of those concerts was, was Duke Ellington. So um, uh, that's how I got into jazz. Uh, but along the way, I've had to I've had to sing a variety of different uh, different styles. I've, I've sung classical, uh, 
classical, I've done rock, <laughs> I've done metal, I've done rap, I've done soul, I've done blues, I've done a variety of different things. I've even done some foreign language uh, 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 recordings uh, for pay for call commercials and things. Um, as a singer, probably uh, the person, or the, the, the persons, vocalists who have influenced me uh, the most, uh, I would say, um, I mean, the obvious ones, uh, even though he's, he's not considered jazz, he could and has sung jazz. His name is Stevie Wonder. And, um, you know, I, I, um, um, well, I guess I should tell you the Steve, Steve Wonder story. Well, I'll, I'll tell it later. I'll tell it later. Um, Al Jarreau. Al Jarreau is one of the uh, prime influences on me as, as a jazz uh, singer. I should say as, as, as studying jazz singing to sing jazz. Um, more recently, as recent as probably about nine years ago, I was on Google and just doing a basic uh, you know, search uh, when to find out who you know, the great jazz singers are contemporary. And the name Kurt Elling came up. I was not familiar with Kurt Elling. So I went and purchased, uh, back when you could buy CDs, I went and purchased <clears throat> um, Kurt Elling live at the Green, Green Mill, I think, a Green Mile in, no, Green Mill in Chicago. And that was it. I mean, I, I, I really, I could hear in Kurt singing, I could hear Al Jarreau, I could hear John Hitch, I could hear everything in his singing, and he was right now. That was the main impetus uh, for me to become a jazz, uh, a jazz singer. And, you know, it, it's, this is, it's, it's really a tough time to be saying that you're a jazz singer because, you know, styles come and go, popularities come and go. Jazz is still here. It goes. It has gone through highs and lows, but it's still here, and it's not dying or anything. It's definitely thriving, and so I'm, I'm happy to be a, a part of that. Um, uh, another question: What is the first jazz album I purchased? Oh, I purchased with my own money. This is a very good question. Um, back in the late 1970s, I was on the road, and um, uh, I remember I bought an album, it was a Dizzy Gillespie album. And on the album was Dizzy, Kenny Clark, uh, Charlie Christian, and it's one other person, I can't, I can't remember the name. But that was the first jazz album that I bought. And um, this was right at the time um, when I had met Dizzy Gillespie. Uh, because I was working as a correspondent, jazz correspondent, at Indiana University in Bloomington, Indiana. And I remember I, I took the album that I bought to, um, uh, uh, to interview him. And, you know, it's really interesting <laughs> because I, I met him at a club, and I walked up to him on a break, and I said, Dizzy, I'm correspondent for yada, yada, yada. Uh, I'd like to interview you for the school paper. And he goes, Oh yeah, well just come to my apartment tomorrow. <laughs> come to my apartment tomorrow. He gave me his phone number and his address. Can you imagine that happening nowadays? He gave me his, his phone number and his address at the hotel he was staying. And uh, I went and interviewed him. Near the end of the at the end of, end of the interview, I had him sign uh, uh, sign the album. Uh, and as uh, uh, as an, an artist, <clears throat> I was probably around nineteen twenty at that time. And it was just interesting to be around folks like that. I knew who Dizzy Gillespie was. I knew how famous and how iconic he was even then. You know, and now as I look back, I kind of pinch myself that uh, that uh, uh, I um, that I had the opportunity to hang out with him. Um, one of the things that impressed me about the album, and I've long since forgotten the, the name of the album, because the album was lost years ago, along with a bunch of uh, 33 RPMs that I used to have. Uh, but I remember, uh, other than uh, Dizzy, the person who impressed me the most was Charlie Christian on guitar. You see behind me, I've got some guitars here. And uh, I, I do play acoustic, 
and it, it's a different kind of acoustic. I'm working on a variety of different uh, uh, jazz type things. I won't get into it here, but uh, 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 at that time I was playing more guitar, and uh, Charlie Christian really impressed me on, on, on that album. His 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 uh, uh, vocabulary and how he how he played, and um, uh, it, it was just a, a great great time. Um, some of the projects that um, I have worked on, uh, right at the top of the list, two people I want to mention. First, I want to mention uh, the great vocalist Frida Payne. And if you've watched any of these videos, uh, these uh, alternative uh, venues for jazz videos, you've seen Frida talk about her life. And Frida, and I, you know, first of all, <laughs> we have the same last name. Okay, we have the same last name. But we always say, if you got a name like Payne, you just get, you got to use it somehow. Okay, so Frida and I recorded in LA about oh five six years ago a song called "No Pain, No Gain." It's a duet, and uh, uh, it's off my album, which I just happen to have here. Uh, it's called "Welcome to My World," and uh, the variety of great folks on here, but Frida. Uh, working with Frida was a dream uh, come true. When I was 16 years old, I remember her her great hit, Band of Gold. So um, in working with Frida and being around people who see us working together, the obvious question is, are you two related? I've had people talk to me and go, hey, how's your, how's your wife doing? <laughs> how's your wife Frida doing? How's your sister Frida doing? You know, so, so, what Frida and, I, Frida and I have agreed to say is that we are probably related. We don't know for sure. We do know that my dad's family and her family are from literally the same part of the country, you know. And where she grew up is where a lot of my aunts are. I think she grew up in in, uh, uh, in Michigan. So um, that's one project. And um, along with the album Walker to My World, I did a second album. Uh, two years later, called Two, T Double O, and Frida is on that album too. Um, uh, Yesterday's uh, Pain, Tomorrow's Joy, I think, is the of the of the album. I don't have the hard copy of the album. The album re was released uh, only on on streaming. Um, one thing I should say about No Pain, No Gain is that it was released in the UK, in England, and. It was released in several and in about two different mixes. There's, a, there's a, so there's three versions of No Pain No Gain. There's the original version, which is sort of like a jazzy R&B thing, and then there's something that even sounds like a there's a version that's almost post discoy, and then there's what I like to call a stylistic stylistic version of No Pain No Gain, and it worked very well. Those versions worked very well in the UK because the song went all the way to number one on the charts in the UK. And that would have been what, 1918, or 1918, 2018, 2017, I think. And um, the last time I saw Frida was about a month ago. She came through the San Francisco Bay Area. And I was so honored when she stopped the show and said, ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce to you this wonderful singer that I recorded with, did two albums with, we released a, a song called No Pain, No Gain. She brought me up to the stage and everything. That was that was wonderful. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that Frida and I will uh, work together again. Uh, you know, Frida was just in L.A. at Feinstein's, Feinstein's Fratello's. I think it was last week. It was on my birthday, as a matter of fact, um, with the great Michael Feinstein. And they were doing a tribute to the duets of, uh, of Frank Sinatra. Um, Another project. Um, I mentioned that Kurt Elling uh, is the most recent influence on my wanting to sing jazz. His music director at that time was a wonderful pianist, composer, arranger, producer named Lawrence Hopgood. Lawrence Hopgood. Through my connection uh, with a bunch of musicians, by the way, I met Kurt Elling. I met Kurt Elling years ago. There's a wonderful photo of he and I together when Kurt came through uh, the Bay Area. Um, 
the song that impressed me the most in talking about Kurt uh, off the uh, the live album that I mentioned, live at Green Mill, uh, was a song called Esperanto. And I liked it so much that I wanted to do my own version of it. So I took a chance. I somehow got Kurt Elling's email address. And I sent him an email and said, Kurt, my name is, you know, yada, 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 yada. And I'd like to do my version of your song. And to my surprise, he answered the email, personally answered the email, and gave me permission to, to, uh, to re-record this the song. Uh, it's a song called Esperanto, Esperanto, and it's based on a song called Esperanza. And so um, at some point in the next year or so, I'm going to do my version of that song. Check out the song, Esperanto. It's on, uh, it, it's on the album. Uh, of Kurt Elling Live at the Green Mill. That's one project I'm doing. Uh, the other project I'm doing, uh, I mentioned Lawrence Hobgood uh, with Lawrence, um, is an album of songs. I, I, can't, I can't give it away because we want to keep it, uh, we want to keep it a secret. We've been talking off and on about this for the last couple of years, Lawrence and I. Uh, but it's a song, uh, it's an album in tribute tribute to one of the great singer songwriters of the last 50 years. And we're going to introduce some of these versions in some gigs. Lawrence and I will be doing some concerts here in the Bay Area, probably by the end of this year. And um, it's something I'm very, very uh, happy to be involved with. Lawrence is a wonderful, wonderful musician, and he's, he's a great person as well. Those are the uh, immediate recording projects. I said earlier that I do play guitar and um, I'm working on um, some, some jazz acoustic, acoustic jazz uh, songs in a presentation. No plans to record of yet this year, but definitely, uh, definitely next year. Um, every now and then some folks will ask me if I could give uh, some advice. Hey, somebody's saying hey to me. Says, hey, Cliff. Let me, hey, tell me who you are. I'll give, I'll give it to you. Uh, every now and then, someone uh, will ask me advice. It'd be someone younger and sometimes it's someone in my, in my uh, age group. Uh, all kinds of questions like, Cliff, what, uh, how should I, uh, <laughs> one of my favorite, how can I get discovered? That's a whole litany of things there. Uh, uh, but let me tell you this. Whether you are a singer or a musician, and technically, if you are a singer, you are a musician because we carry our instruments here. And uh, the ones who don't sing and play mechanical instruments, they carry their instruments in some kind of a case. Our instrument is right here. Regardless of the style of music you play, make sure that whatever you sing or whatever you play, it is coming right from here. OK, there are some folks who will tell you that the industry will pretty much determine what you need to do. I say no. no. If you are heart driven, if you know in your heart what you want to say and how you want to say it, you go with that through thick and thin. You go with that when it's popular, your style may be popular. There'll be times when your style won't be possible, but won't be popular popular, but you stay with it. You stay with it, not just because you want to keep making music, but the, this whole process of performing music, making music is such a spiritual thing. It's a part of us. You know, we were created to have this artistic music in us. It has to come out. It has to come out some way. And so my encouragement to you is do what you do musically. Do it as well as you can do it for as long as you can do it. And don't pay any attention to any naysayers because, you know, the more that you get yourself out there, the more that you create, the more daring it is, the more on the edge it is, you're going to get some people who are not going to like it. But you have to ignore them. You have to ignore them. There are very few people. Very few people in this business, or even outside the business, because sometimes you get uh, 
you get some advice outside the business that you could use inside the business. There are very few people that you can actually trust to say certain things to. And that's a whole nother subject, a subject, uh, a whole nother subject there. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, I, I love it when I, I see here that folks are, uh, are are checking out. Let me give you some advice based on some advice that was given to me a long, long time ago. I have a brother who also plays music. He sings and he plays bass. I have a sister too. She sings too. Uh, they're in different states. Um, one day when my brother and I were coming home from school, um, at that time, this is like the mid sixties, I used to play a lot of violin and I had my violin case and my brother at that time, he played clarinet. And just before we got home, uh, a, a van pulled up and written on the van was the Nat Story Trio. Nat Story in Evansville, Indiana was a famous jazz, I think he played organ. And he got out of the van, he goes, hey, can, 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 I, can I talk to you too, just for a second? He said, you know, when I was a kid, I, my mom didn't have money to send us to school to learn music. I learned music all by myself and I'm doing well. My encouragement to you, you two boys, is to practice hard, do what you do. Don't let anyone try to turn you away. Just do what you do. You have an opportunity that, that I didn't have. And in a way, everyone, that's my that's my voice, my advice to uh, uh, all of you who are out there in this business of music. And that story, I've never forgotten that uh, that day when that story said that to my my brother and I. Um, I'm trying to think, um, you know, I, thank you for tuning in. Do you have any questions? I'm trying to think of other things that I could talk about. <coughs> um, if you're in the um, San Francisco Bay Area on July 20th, July 20th from six to nine, I think it's a Friday, I will be appearing at Deja Blue. I'll be doing my jazz set at Deja Blue from six until nine. Deja Blue is a wonderful soul food restaurant and performance venue. It's one of the finest in California. And I am so happy to be performing there. It's an honor to be performing there, actually. And I invite you to uh, to come there. You could go to um, uh, the website. Deja Blue is in Seaside, California. And that's S-E-A-C-I-D-E, California. It's right next to Carmel, beautiful Carmel, and Monterey, right next to it. Hey, Leon, how are you doing, man? Leon Joyce, Jr., everyone, a phenomenal, phenomenal drummer. And he uh, he books the talent at uh, at Deja Blue. Um, let me see who else is here. Uh, that's right. It's it's right near Monterey. Yes, yeah, near Monterey and Carmel. It's a beautiful, beautiful area right by the Pacific Ocean. You know, the air is so clear and, and lovely and all. Um, I'm trying to think, what, what else can I tell you? Um, um, oh, um, about the pandemic. You know, when the pandemic hit, uh, it knocked all of us uh, on our rear end, so to speak. Uh, I also teach voice, have a lot of voice students. Uh, and um, I went through about one or two months where things were really shaky. But, you know, something really interesting happened. I started getting a whole lot of students. Gig-wise, I went for several months without gigging at all, probably about five, six months without gigging. And during that time, I just got my trusty guitar and played and sang. So I was able to build up my chops for that. Um, but by and large, as the pandemic continued, I started doing well, even though there were no gigs. Uh, teaching is what is literally what saved me. And of course, during that time, I also made plans to get back on the concert uh, circuit and do what I love to do uh, so well. So, um, we are now in the midpoint of the year 2022, and I am looking at uh, bookings at the end of the summer, uh, concert bookings at the end of, of the summer, and bookings actually going in to the spring of next year. I expect to be performing in the LA area. Uh, I also expect to be performing in the New York area. So be sure to check me out on my website which is 
kind of being re uh, revitalized right now. So please be patient with me. There's a lot of information there. But my website is cliffpain.org. You can see it there on, the, on your screen, cliffpain.org. You can get the whole 411 of where I've been, where I'm at, and where I'm going. And uh, I encourage you to, to do that. You can also check me out on Instagram. That's Cliff Payne Singer on Instagram. I'm on I'm on Twitter as well, Cliff Payne uh, on Twitter. Um, you can also check me out on Wikipedia. Wikipedia. Just remember, my first name is spelled with one F and uh, and, and not two. Cliff Payne. And I'm on Wikipedia, and of course, you can just type my name on in any Google search or whatever search engine you have. And you'll see everything that I've done and everything that I'm doing and everything that I'm going to do. I love singing. I love singing jazz in particular. Uh, my jazz singing uh, style, uh, I call it contemporary jazz with total uh, honoring of the past. When you come to see me, please know that I, I, I'm not going to try to recreate the past. No, rather... I want to bring cheap jazz into the now. Jazz has always been into the now, from the 1920s on up until now. And here we are in the new millennium. Uh, my jazz will be in the right now, with homage to the past. Okay, my name is Cliff Payne, and it has been so wonderful to just spill my heart out into what I do. If you have any questions, if you need to contact me, you can contact me. Org, and you can also contact me by contacting Gail Boyd, who I once again thank you, Gail. I thank you for this opportunity to talk to the worldwide audience of the importance and my love for this wonderful American art form that we call jazz. Thank you for being with me.